Hey everybody, it is July 5th, and you are watching Squad Ops. You're listening to me, CMYK Matter, and I'm here with a buddy of mine for the night, Tedish. How's it going, Tedish? Hey everybody, how we doing? Everybody ready for some uh everybody ready for some squad ops fun? It's a gorgeous oh, yeah, Wednesday. Man. Oh yeah, I'm excited about it. We're we're out here on Kokan taking a look around the map. It's a little little foggy, a little cloudy out there, some low lying fog, gonna be a bit tough for visibility. But we're gonna have a good time. We are running the Operation Farmer's Fate tonight. So I guess we should go over what Squad Ops is for anybody who doesn't know what it is out there. Squad Ops is a community composed of a lot of people that puts together and runs One Life Operations. These One Life Operations come in many different forms and they have many different objectives. And we'll be going over that in a little bit. But everybody who is in here has decided that they want to conform to a certain set of rules. Those rules being that whenever you are shot and you are down on the ground, you cannot be revived. That's all you get. You get one life and when you die, that's it. Can't be revived anymore. Other than that, there's some other things that we put in for to keep things kind of fair and flavorful. We don't allow optics on any of the guns that they're going to be using tonight. We also don't allow people to run across walls or parkour off of buildings or anything right. like that. Anything we you wouldn't that do in real be, life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything that you wouldn't do in real life, we kind of consider that to be a no-no. So everybody has been brought in with those rules. And funny man, uh, no, they cannot respawn. They get one life after they die. They can come back in admin cam like you're seeing Tedish and I flying around in. You can see us kind of just cruising around the area. They can come back in admin cam and watch the rest of the operation, but once they are dead, they are dead. They cannot come back. A lot so of times, honestly, intense. that's uh, yeah, that's the better part of the of the game. Like you get your life, you put put in your effort. Maybe you get a kill or six, and then and then you die, and then you get to fly around and figure out how what where everyone's at, who killed you, like maybe your impact, where the holes are, everything mm -hmm. else. So. It's, it's pretty nice. Sometimes, yeah, it's a lot yep. more fun sometimes. And we also then, we don't allow talking to your squad after you die, so you can't communicate yeah. where the guys are, yeah, or what's going one. on or anything. So somebody can go down and be dead, and you won't even know for a couple minutes. The guy watching your back is dead, and you don't even know it. You peek around a corner, and suddenly, yeah, your, your buddy that was watching your back is dead. And that goes for uh, commands as well. So each uh, squad gets the uh, squad leader, and they can communicate with command. And then underneath squad leader, you've got uh, fire team leads. And you, there's two Absolutely. fire. If it's a full squad, two fire team leads. And then uh, the rules that we're running right now is you can pass command to the fire team leads. So if squad leader goes down, he can pass that role to the fire team leads, and then they can continue communication with the other squad leaders. But if all the fire team leads go down and squad leader goes down, that squad is left with no more communication with the rest of the team. You can still communicate with each other, of course, but uh, that can lead to some really interesting scenarios where you've got a squad <laughs> separated and they're like, oh, let's, oh, we've got to link up with the rest of the team. And then it's like their mission to, you know, get across the map and absolutely figure out what's going on. They have no contact with the command and it could be that the rest of their team is up, but they might think that they're the last five guys alive on their team, you know? Can can they get revived if they get killed, uh, TM Sass says, or are they dead once and can't be revived? They are dead completely and cannot be revived. Once they have died, they cannot be revived whatsoever. So that means they can still be shot and they can get bandaged up and healed, but once they go down, that's it. They're dead. And we played with that for a while. When we first ran the first set of ops, medics could revive. So medics became suddenly the primary target. And the success or failure of a team totally depended on whether or not that medic got killed quickly. And then if it was a good medic, it was all of a sudden that team did really well. Um, and so we decided that, much like the optics, it's like, well, that's a mechanic that's great for vanilla play and public servers. But for these ops, you know, it really just makes it a little bit a little bit more Absolutely. intense if uh, when you go down, you're out. Oh, let's go ahead and talk about what the objective is here tonight. So this is Operation Farmer's Fate. It's played on a version of Kokan. And we should go over kind of what the deal is here. So the teams tonight are going to be the Insurgents versus the United States Army. The United States is ta tasked with 
putting down, creating a fob, and holding it out against INS forces. So they have the option... Forward operating base. Absolutely. So they have an option of where they can put it. So the one that they've chosen on this round is Tempest Estate. They can put it kind of right there on Tempest Estate. Some of the other places where they can put it are where you see village marked on the map. They can also put it in Echo 5 Keypad 1, which is to the southwest of Nexus there. And then the final one they can put it in is what is usually Gas Station, which is up in the Foxtrot 4 Keypad 8 area. So they can put it in four different areas, and then the insurgents have to come and take it for them from them. They get a couple of different assets to go along with that. The United States gets one basic open-top Humvee, along with one Logi and one transport truck. The INS gets one artillery technical. They get four regular technicals. They get one logistics and one trans. So get a lot of different vehicles. It opens so, up a lot of different, uh, a lot of different tactics. Basically, that's. And what what's the rest of it? Let's see. The U.S. is not allowed to push the Humvee north of yes. the which line is that? The three four. The three line? four line. Yes, they cannot cross north of the three four line. At now, infantry assets as well as the transport and logistics truck can go north of that, but the Humvee cannot go north of that. We just decided to do that for balancing. Basically, is what that comes down to. We have had some interesting scenarios on this map where maybe the uh, insurgent commander maybe forgot that, uh, (laughs) hey, and that might have been me at the time, that, hey, they can actually push across that 3-4 line. So, uh, yeah, be sure you're on guard. Absolutely. The last time we ran this, actually, Best Pony rushed a squad north of where the setup is now, actually, ran into an entire squad that was in a transport technical and destroyed them as soon as the game started. It was very quick. Uh, I would I would say it was within 40 to 50 seconds. Yeah, After within the first time. It was, it was pretty bad. It was pretty All bad. All of a sudden, you're down, down a third of your team right off the Absolutely. bat. It's uh, made for a, yeah, an interesting game. Absolutely. Still fun. Still fun, even if you lose. Like, these ops aren't <laughs> necessarily meant to be fair. Um, it's it's all about the experience, and then even if you get you know stomped the first round, you switch switch teams. Everyone switches on the second round, and uh, you know strategy is going to be different. But you get to Absolutely. do it again from the other side. So even if it's you know potentially grossly imbalanced, maybe by design, uh, maybe by you know just fate, then uh, you still get to see both sides of it. So it's a good time. Absolutely, an example of that we ran Grinder here this last weekend, and it was considered to be a heavily INS sided event though we did have one u.s victory on that yep. so that was quite interesting to see but it was a heavily ins side of the event but that's okay you know it's all about those stories that come out during it absolutely tm sas says it he cannot wait until it's 50 v 50 we're excited about that too we're excited about pretty much everything that's coming to this there's a lot of great stuff coming british forces absolutely someone mentioned that actually let's while we have a little bit of time it might be good to go ahead and go over who are our commands and squad leads. That might be a good little thing for us to do before we get back into yeah, it. Yeah, call the teams. Why so, not? yeah, yeah. Give them a little shout out. These are the guys that work for it. They are the ones that set up the plans and corral everybody and get them kind of sorted into what they're doing. So, on my side, for the U.S. side for this round and the INS side for the the second round, but this side they will be UNS or U.S. The, the command is going to be Xbit, and his capable squad leads are going to be Odessa, Jaffe, Mighty, and Shadowed Ritual. All very experienced squad leads and also a very experienced commander, so I feel like they will have no problem working with one another. And USA Day plus one. Hopefully the U.S. does uh, at least okay on these, right? Absolutely. Uh, I would hope so. So on the insurgent side, we've got uh, Karma Cut, who most people might recognize, um, in here uh, commanding. And then we've got Best Pony, uh, Creeping, Nasty Nate, and Quirkly uh, running his squads, all experienced um, squad leads. And uh, you might notice a lot of people in here with the ops tag on. That's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily mean they're part of the admin team or the staff team. 
The ops tab just means they're part of the community and they've been part of the community long enough to be considered a regular. Um, and then they get voted in and it's a, it's a nice little badge that uh, is conferred. Um, but it's not... Mm -hmm. Anyone can be that. All you just got to be part of the community and uh, just you know hang out, play with us enough, and uh, you know. Though I do have to say, rules. looking looking at these commands and squad leads, I believe every single one of them is staff, admin, or manager. Am I right on that? On yeah. surgeons, yep. Yeah. yeah, same for yeah my side. So yes, yeah. We've got all staff leading tonight, so it's going to be really interesting. These are people who have been in it for a while, and they know their roles around here, so it's very exciting. Also, we should go over the assets. We restrict well, we the assets those that are allowed per team. In order, oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess we didn't go over the individual infantry assets. Right, right. Each squad is allowed a certain type of kits that they're allowed to give out within their squad. And the reason we do that is just to keep things fair and balanced. So on the U.S. side, they will get two times ARs, automatic riflemen, one times LAT, light anti-tank, and one times medic. And they get those per squad. What do you got over on INS? Uh, I believe, let's see, i got to pull up that document as it's a little minimized <laughs> here. Uh, it's It's roughly the same, except the... Insurgents don't get the GL, instead they get the LATS, and then they also get the scout kit, which comes with the IED and the mine. Um, the IED can certainly lead to some interesting uh, scenarios here. I believe, yeah, VBIDs are allowed on this one, so we could have a rogue technical going off in hunting. <laughs> um, you can also use IEDs, and a lot of people don't necessarily know this. You can plant an IED outside of a wall, and the explosion will penetrate in through the wall. So you can use it to I have clear definitely buildings. learned that considering it's been I've been the victim of it a few times. It's never it's never very fun. That being said, it looks like Xbit's lining everybody up for platoon brief. What's the situation on Karma Cut over there? Yep, same thing. They're all gathered over here in a haphazard fashion. Let's go ahead and listen in on Karma Cut since everybody kind of knows him. We'll we'll listen in on his briefing if you can get us in there, Tedish. And see what he yeah, does. yeah, get in nice and close so we can hear him. Oh, he's calling for comms right now. Okay, All right, welcome to Operation Farmer's Fate. This is. <laughs> All right, let's the fucking calm. All right, welcome to Operation Farmer's Fate. This is a INS versus American fo uh, FOB operation. Uh, Americans are setting up a FOB. We'll mark possible locations now. Reference your map. FOB, F uh, the FOB uh, is going to be at one of these four locations. The enemy FOB will be placed and they will be building it with one times logi. That one times logi can make continuous trips to continue building supplies and uh, defenses but it will require the Humvee escort. Uh, U.S. has one times Humvee uh, that will be using either as fire support or as convoy uh, protection for their trans. Uh, they also have a trans, which is going to be... Um, or they also have infantry, which is allowed to cross that 3-4 line northbound, but for everything else, it's going to be south of the 3-4 uh, line. Our objective is to take our four techies, one transport, one logi, and one arty techie, find and eliminate the enemy FOB or enemy FOB. We're going to be setting up the arty truck on the defense mark. That's going to be squad one's responsibility for the arty truck and the logi. Arty truck will set, they'll set uh, a perimeter and they'll stand by for call for fire missions. Uh, squad two is taking all of the Dishka techies and they will be scouting and interdicting the trans if possible. Or the four techies will be moving independently from the red group until we set to assault at us. When we to assault the west here, I mark with the MG, and the other fire team is going to run the Lodgy and the Humvee back and forth until we call it quit. And uh, my two guys will help out at Tempest. So the general game plan is to. Victory squad. Squad three is going to be on the eastern side of the map. Uh, scratch that. Squad 3 is going to be on the western side of the map. Squad 4 is going to be on the eastern side of the map. Uh, proceeding in a rough line 
uh, loose line southbound um, scouting as usual. Be advised that enemy infantry can cross that 3-4 line. So as soon as we cross our 2-3 line, expect contact front. Uh, proceed with caution. That's pretty much the gist of this operation. Um, now that all squads know their responsibilities, first phase is uh, Rocket Techie will set. Squad 1 will get their uh, already position set. Squad 2 will start initial scouting with the technicals, trying to interdict and scout and pid the enemy fob. Squad 3 and 4 will proceed southbound in a, loo in, in a loose line. 3 on the left, 4 on the uh, right side of the map until we get a pid. Once we get a pid is when we'll uh, transition to the assault phase. All squads will regroup. We'll hold before we assault make sure we're all consolidated. Squad, two, uh, squad 1 will prep the target area with Artie. We'll pound it for maybe five minutes with the arty truck soften up the fences we'll fire one last salvo and time the assault with that salvo when the uh, rockets land infantry will push technicals will roll up provide suppressing fire infantry will push under the suppressing fire we'll take the point with aggression everyone copy 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 this is gonna be a straightforward uh scout and destroy mission search and destroy mission so keep your eyes up make sure you check your flanks pit the targets Organize a plan and then execute. Copy. 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 That's That's good. Good. Copy. All right. All righty. Sounds like we got a nice, uh, fairly straightforward plan going for Karma here. Scout them out, figure where they are, and then soften them up like, uh, like some meat, and then uh, assault Give with that aggression. tenderizer. Yeah, the tenderizer. <laughs> That's the word I was going for. Yes, How's uh, anything so interesting is... going over on the U.S.? Uh, Google Tracks, yes, this is really round one. It took a while to get people in tonight due to some briefings and a lot of new people. We had to do a full roll call. We had 144 people signed up tonight, so quite crazy. Anyway, yes, uh, over here on the U.S. defense side, they have chosen Temple Estate as their defense point. They're going to be shoving out one squad up here to market, which you can see straight ahead. They're going to be taking a transport truck and maneuvering them up to market and trying to defend there, maybe catch anybody unawares that would be moving in that direction. They're also going to be mostly setting up all of their defenses in Temple Estate proper, including a couple machine guns, things like that, indirect fire shelters, because they know that the rocket arty is out there, or the arty techie is out there. And other than that, they're mostly going to be keeping people on a little limited outer perimeter and pulling them back in as needed. That's an interesting choice for the for the FOB location because it is the furthest from the U.S. main, so those Logi trips are going to be longer Absolutely. and much more exposed. So my guess is they'll probably get maybe two Logi runs in, and then it'll either A, get destroyed, or B, they're going to call it in because I think those techies are going to be on the hunt as soon as we start. So we'll see how that goes. Absolutely. It's going to be pretty crazy. These, I think that... Expit, at least from what I've talked to him about his defense choices on Temple Estate and the reason why he usually ends up picking this when he commands. He said that mostly it just feels like this has the most natural defense to it. It has the most lockdown perimeter. It has a lot of buildings that you can use to cover other areas. It has limited entry points. And for him, the and we are value alive. of getting those, getting those limited entry points far exceeds the times you have to make logi trips. But yes, we are live. Everybody's off. Let's see what's going I, on I'll, here. I'll definitely agree with that. I think a lot of people um, don't necessarily have the best defensive doctrine with concentric, concentric rings of defense. You have Absolutely. an outer ring, and then you can fall into an inner ring and fall into an inner ring, rather than having all of your everything on one outer ring, and if that gets penetrated or broken, then you're broken. Um, so, yeah, I, I do like the choice of Tempest Estate. A lot easier to building to building, whereas a lot of the others, it's, yeah, one line. Do we have to do roll call often in the open events? Yes, we actually do, typically. It's, it's usually pretty crazy. So Tonight, we actually is... almost had yeah, we almost almost had enough to run two ops, which uh, we'll talk about maybe down the line. But uh, that's crazy, yeah. 
Odessa's squad has pushed up into market here. They're taking position, and it looks like they are going to be getting this forward watch in case anybody comes up. They took a transport truck, which you can see right here, and they killed the engine just as it rolled into market, dismounted everybody, and they are taking up residence in this market area. So they're hoping to catch some people unaware whenever they push into this, though from what it seems, Karma Cut is not having anybody crazy fast push in the market that I can see. Yeah, Karma and Magnet Magnetics are actually the closest to danger, but uh, it looks like they are still well out of sight. Absolutely. At least for now, Odessa's pushing up to that north side, Swizzle is along her side, but looks like just for now they're not going to be able to see the insurgents on my screen obviously we get a little bit of the advantage where the eyes in the sky and we get those nice big red dots over the enemy but down there on the ground they have a much more limited point of view if i were to just even it is get down in here definitely position. paranoid down there absolutely you know you got you got one life one bullet you're done absolutely you peek out the wrong window you peek out the wrong window, you're having a bad day. It Everybody's really just kind of moving out over there on the insurgent side. So yeah, we are flipping around cameras here quite a bit. Um, so blue is, you know, not necessarily always the U.S. It's whatever whatever camera you're looking through. So we got blues and reds, and Absolutely. let's see, let's see where that wolf pack went. If you're looking at Tedish's camera, you will see an insurgent flag in the top right, and the insurgent team will be blue for him. If you're looking at my camera, CMYK Matter, you will see a U.S. flag in the top right, and anybody that's blue there will be U.S. So you can kind of use that flag in the top right to get a denotation of what you're looking at, who's friendly, who's enemy for that person. We also have, I should go over this, we have a bunch of people on the ground doing the dirty work these guys these boots on the ground are going to be the ones that really provide you some interesting views as we get into things actually before we get into that though it looks like jack reynolds is pushing this squad across the field i feel like ram is definitely going to get a sight on them tedish do they know about them pushing into market i haven't heard any calls no yeah it looks like the squad is wow moving across the open field ram 100 percent has vision on them Absolutely. Ram definitely has sight on them. He will yeah, be calling like... out these movements. There's two doors we can go on. Let's see what happens southwest. here. If they decide they to open up or if... To the north. You can see Silverman pushing across the field right now. They do not have any idea. Actually, Jack Reynolds and Nasty Nate about to run into Rango and Sightless here. We yeah. might have our first contact running very it soon. Be an audio contact, if nothing else. They're definitely here in the footsteps. Oh, there we go. Odessa He's opens up on up. those in the field. Grenade goes out. Doesn't take down anybody, but they know the contact is there. You can see that whole. Oh, there we ISD. go. Odessa oh. with the first kill of the game. Takes down Game Master Me. It's a good grenade. Kills one, wounds another. Skulldish and Broly hugging the dirt. Sightless getting into very close contact over here, further into market. Satan takes some shots. He lays down, fires back. Nasty Nate. More shots coming in. Yep. G3. Laying down let's fire. Let's see, if, let's see if he peeks that corner into fire. Nope. Frag's coming Satan. out. Satan. Did he just, wow, nasty Nate <laughs> with, with the excellent frag. <laughs> uh, that bounced back a little bit, didn't it? He threw it straight into the archway above him. Oh, reach oh. goes down. Wow, good shots coming in there. Satan pulls back. He has made his way out. Death Squad could get a quad kill right here if he gets it. Gets... More grenades. Absolutely. More grenades. Lots of grenades. Oh, they get Jack Reynolds with that grenade. Scarce took down Jack Reynolds, and Nathan goes down as well. Good engagement here. This is yeah, holding up the entirety of that INS advantage. They they tried to push through. 
We tried to push through here, and I mean, they had to know that there might be contact through here, but it seems so far they're having a hard time clearing it out. Both sides taking some casualties. Odessa, Broly and Ode Broly Odessa. Here. Yep. This could be a squad lead. Ooh, ooh, yep. Ooh. Wow. Odessa takes one. Odessa's oh. down. Squad lead down. That is Odessa down. That is one of the squad leads for the U.S. team down. And now, then I believe what will happen Scrunty... here? Ouch. Oh, yeah. Scrunty and Bad frag. That was a Bad TK. Frag. That's unfortunate. So what will no, happen here yeah, was. with Odessa going down? She was the squad lead. She will pass it off to her Alpha Fire team if they're still alive or Bravo Fire team. So it's not like they will have no leadership, but... If you want to keep eyes on this, looks like we got a little development in the south with the wolf pack versus the lodgies. The wolf pack has found the lodgies and are planning to um, ambush it on its way back. Okay. Corsair, you're taking the driver's seat back. Oh yeah, looks like they might have some call. engagement Oof. down there. Back up here on these the gunners. north. Back up here on the north, this this squad is just getting dwindled dwindled down. The insurgents squad is not having a good day. Their interaction here has not gone very well. Nasty Nate, Death Squad, and Silverman are the only ones up here on the north. What's happening down there, Forrest Tedish? They're setting up. Looks like the uh, Lodgy's coming back here. It's coming. It's yeah. I mean, there's no way it's going to survive. They're going to lose the Lodgy and the Humvee here versus four technicals. Oh. Like, ouch. They've just set up a pure ambush for the tech. Uh, yeah. Or for the logistics. It comes over there. the second berm. It's uh, ouch. Poor Krusty. Maybe one of he's he's got to care in the world, now, right? Okay, they see him now. Creeping's got to be called it out. Oh, there, there. here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Who's firing? Wow, okay. One down. One techie down. They can't wow, see each other. Alright, there goes the Humvee. Lodgy made a break for it. He might ran actually away. make it. He actually might make it home. Brave Sir Krusty ran away. <laughs> no, Krusty didn't make it away. Krusty oh no, Krusty the, uh, was in the Humvee. He sacrificed himself for the cause. Oh, how terrible! Up here on the north, Carpy has went down. We still are dealing with Nasty Nate, Death Squad, and Silverman. On the other side. Satan, Sightless, Ram, Rango, Scarce, all holding this area down. They're still trading shots back and forth. Like oh, Sightless gets taken out, yeah. Unfortunate. Sightless tried to move into position here and got taken out. Swizzle what do we got up here? In on them. Three versus five? Three, three versus, versus five, five at this point. Three yeah, versus it was six. three versus oh, six. Five, yeah. It was three versus six, but they just lost Sightless here shortly ago. I'm still trying to watch this door, but I'm half health now. It looks like they're calling the logistic truck back to village now. They want to keep that well out of harm's way. We've got smoke being popped over here. Ram might be trying to move through that. This is going to be a real difficult engagement for them because these three insurgents, Nasty Nate, Silverman, and Death Squad, they have kind of just bunkered themselves up in this. Yeah, you know, Truce, it does look a little rough for the U.S. right now losing the Humvee like that, but once the insurgents try to start to make their actual push onto the temple, that's going to be a real problem. I mean, if you look at the kills right now, it's uh, seven to six deaths. So we're so still it's very it's, early. It's even at this point. A lot of it might depend on how that Artie does. And if anyone's played against Karma, they know they he loves his Artie. So, he loves his uh, Rocket Pod Artie. Yes, he does. Some sometimes it does absolutely nothing. It always scares people, but sometimes it'll pick up, you know, a dozen kills. You never know. So Satan calling in, reporting the current casualty report, and starting to maneuver their guys to pull back a little bit. 
he has now taken over command for Odessa's squad, just as we said, Odessa went down and passed the baton of command onto one of her fire team leads, which is Satan, and he will now be taking over, leading them, hopefully, safely away from this engagement, or into a better position to take care of this engagement. Yeah, it looks like Nasty Nate is just uh, holing up with his trio in here, hard pointing up, waiting for the U.S. to make a move on them. Which is generally, it sounds like, you know, most of their grenades have already been used, so defense is uh, generally a little bit easier than offense, at least in squad. Show is, we are giving away a copy of squad at the end of this, so this game that you're watching right here, we'll be giving away a copy of it at the end of the night. Moose asked, wait, INS get a fob, what for, since there's no respawn? The reason that they get a fob is so that they can build a vehicle repair station and use that to rearm the rocket pod technique technical. Yep. So in theory, you could have bombardments, uh, you know, nonstop. Um, it's just a matter of how well executed they are, and then whether or not the U.S. wants to send a squad out to ambush that and take it out, which usually ends up happening. But uh, we'll see on this one. We haven't heard any rocket rockets come out. Looks like the insurgents are just setting up on the east and southwest. Sounds like they're about to start firing. They've targeted in the village. It sounds like. The rocket so pod already? They don't, I don't think they know exactly where the fob is. Hmm. Well, they've only had that limited contact in market, so they might not know. I think they're, they think it's a village at this point. Very interesting to see. Let's see. Let's see, where's the... Yeah, the already's coming from Echo 2. So that's going to be a long shot. It's going to be a huge spread. Moose, if people leave, can you get in the second round? Yes, absolutely. As you can see, the rocket already is sitting right here. Best Pony is going to be on it. And if we get some info on it here. This rock. As you can see, this thing has a big old rocket pod on it. Can lay down a lot of fire. Very, very good. It has a UB-32 rocket pod on it. The same one that I believe is usually equipped on Apaches. This thing can lay down a lot of hell. It has some big range to it. It, it spreads out horizontally. But ultimately, very good. It's just uh, its defense rating, pretty low. This thing is, is very, very weak and can take a... One, I, I believe, just one rocket, and it is definitely just having a bad time. Glass cannon, for sure. I believe... Absolutely. Be There's wrong, the shots coming out. It's stolen from a, a hind, not the... Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. It is. It it's is a Russian technology, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It is stolen from the hind. How many rounds did they fire on that? Just two. Looks like ranging. Just two. Scouting ranging shots. Haven't seen them yet. He's calling corrections. Are they still thinking it's on Village, then? I think so. Hmm. Actually, Shots are out. This rogue squad hit. here... Oh, they're, yep, the they're firing a Village. Well, you know, they have saw they saw the Humvee and the logistics truck. They saw the logistics truck move into Village, actually. If you recall, oh, you're you can right. see the logistics truck is parked right here. XBit called them off and told them to just park it in village. So Might as I'm well, wondering right? if they saw that logistics truck parked there and they're like, oh, wow, now it's going to be on village. Good misdirection if that's the case. Wow. I didn't, I didn't see where those hit. Those hit south of village, actually, it looks like. I think they're out of range. Might be so. Yeah, they're max range there. Well, for Village, sounds like they're probably per perfect for uh, Tempest. Yeah, you can definitely hit Tempest from there. I've seen them firing from that position. The Hind would be pretty cool. They are definitely working on choppers. The first one we are going to get is the, I believe, Black Hawk, right? the Blackhawk is the first one, yeah, from the latest update they were talking about. Yeah, that'll change things. You can bet you... Yeah, you can bet you I'll be wanting to use that. <laughs> I love those things. Yeah, we'll see how difficult they make the uh, controls on that. 
Yeah. You know, it might be one of those things where you need to use some sort of stick, you know, or it might even be better to use a game pad or something like that for flying it, depending on how they make the controls. I'm going to keep one guy from Bravo in this truck, and the rest of you, yeah, go get that transport truck and meet me in D3. Yeah, I yeah. All right. So, currently, we're just kind of in a little bit of a lull, though I did just hear Xbit say that contact was started east, and we hear some shots going out here on the yeah, north side north. of Temple Estate. Sunny D and Goobs are laying down fire on Silverman, Jack Reynolds, and this is the remnants of that squad from earlier that we saw push into market. They, they are all have now pushed down up. here. Ooh, that's dangerous. Yeah. Looks like they did lose where... one there. Spacing is so important. I mean, they didn't really pay for it here because there was no explosives. But uh... oh, did we talk about SOTT at all? No, we haven't. Uh, we should we should cover some of that. Yeah, so uh, this is an open op that we're doing here. What is it, the first Wednesday of every month? Yes, an open first op Wednesday of every month. Yeah, you don't... Uh, anyone can join, you just need to get on the list and uh, get on the list early or else you probably will be on the wait list, uh, which we had 70 people for this time. Yep. Um, um, but every other op, which are Saturdays and then the other Wednesdays... Um, you need to do our SOTT training first, which gives just basically puts everyone on the same plate. Takes what forty five minutes, half an hour, forty five minutes. About to run that, half it. an hour to forty five minutes, depending on the people. It's a hands on, like in person, in game, not in person, in game training. Um, it just goes over basics, you know, how to move, how to bound, what to do under fire. How to you know move as a squad? Just really basic things that just ammo get, call sure outs, that... map call outs, those sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. How to suppress effectively rather than just mag dumping. Oh, looks like we got rockets coming in, and they are on their own people here. That was a little, little off. <laughs> <laughs> This little engagement still going on up here. Jaffe, Goobzor, and Sunny D on the U.S. side putting in fire on Death Squad and Silverman. It does look like they did take out somebody over there as they were making this push in. This is it is already... Nate? It must have been Nate, I believe. Yeah, we got no way to relay that. Yeah, oh. Nate is down. Over here on yeah. the east, Karma Cut leading the charge here, pushing on Temple Estate from the east. Karma Cut... Magus Arcanus leading the charge in. Yeah, that could be interesting if he thinks that they're all in uh, village. And he thinks he's charging into a mostly empty uh, city. Absolutely. How are their defenses stationed in there? Have they built up anything heavy, or have they just left it pretty natural? You know, so far they've left it pretty natural. They've got some sandbags up here on a roof, and it looks like they do have a 50 cal emplacement facing east in case they decide to push up this road. So they've got that nice 50 cal placed here, and it's just looking down the road. It'll tear up anybody that tries to make a push into that field, so they'll have to take an alternate route. Other than that, though, they're keeping the defenses pretty natural. They're setting up a couple funnel points with sandbags here and there, but it looks like they're mostly trying to keep things natural. They think that it is worth it. Oh, rocket already coming in there. More rockets. Again, they are Again, long, yep. deep. They got a call out on where those rockets are coming from. The rockets landed right here in this field. And best pony. I'm doubting on that rocket. Five left, yeah. not five right. Doubting that the U.S. are going to send a squad out to it. You know, it wouldn't make sense for them. They've got a lot of buildings, a lot of cover. They have no mobility for it anyways. But it looks like the wolf pack is setting up in the southwest. Absolutely. We haven't even touched on them yet. Ooh. Wolfpack is going to run Maybe we go have past Bird Person here. Uh, yeah. Bird Person sitting there watching them go past. Who's who's leading that squad? Some rockets go in on the field down there. Still. Oh! oh! The technical takes a hit from Bird Person. Techie takes a hit. And some uh, MG fire. Ooh, Techie's running into each other. He's got his other rocket ready. He's peeking up. Wolfpack's bugging out. And he misses rocket the second wild. rocket. Yep, unfortunate. 
as you can see, though, they pulled that thing back there real quick. <laughs> but lucky for them, they've got another techie ready to go. They can just s s switch it out. Man, crazy, crazy stuff. That wolf pack. Hell, if if they get some shots in, we'll see. I mean, now that the vehicles are gone. I don't see the wolf pack being that effective, other than a little bit of suppressing fire. But it's Absolutely. a you know a two tiered compound. Like I don't think. I don't think they should uh, commit too many resources to those. Oh, the rocket already has actually started to walk in a little closer. So the couple first volleys were wide, and then they walked it in lower, and now these have started hitting in the compound. Oh, man. Oops. Hurt somebody. Starting to hit on this north side. Looks like yeah, Truth they Realm hurt took, Truth uh, Realm. took some splash. Absolutely. Okay, roger that. Rearm or... Reset, you... Jaffe just called out that they're getting shelled hard on the north, and they have actually retreated back into the compound, but we just heard the call out that they are actually out of rockets for now. Karma was actually taking some rounds there from uh, Kahuna mm. and Evan SMA, and that little yeah, uh, OP. Getting some good sight lines. That's one thing about Tempest Estate that I know... Xbit enjoys too, is there are some really great sight lines coming up to it. The one avenue of advance that is a little more protected is actually the eastern advance that Karma Cut is pushing up right now. It has trees and bushes and all kinds of other things. But other than that, there are pretty great sight lines all around. Kukuna, there's a combo like from Karma's perspective. He was just calling out. He's like, oh man, this, this looks like an avenue attack, but this could be difficult. Uh, especially with Evan SMA firing in there. In that 50 they cal don't... that they built yeah. up on the roof, Dagos and Chappie opening up. It's Chappie spotting for him, and Dagos laying down fire. I mean, Ooh. there definitely is an approach here, but it is tight, and you've got to stay low. Rockets coming in from Best Pony now. Rockets. Oh, yep. Ooh, Ooh. good that hits. Was... Yeah, those are right on. Karma's was calling for five more. Five out. That's what they said. This sweep. Yeah, looks like the wolf pack is down there, attracting attention. Laying in fire. Rockets coming in. The tenderizers doing his job. Oof. Whew, they're hitting right on the estate. Yep. Everybody's staying in buildings though. They're not poking their heads out too much. But honestly, Artie. It's not that damaging. It does about the same damage as a frag grenade if it were to hit next of you. But it's just the scary factor of it. It sh pushes you into buildings. Ooh, and there's ooh, uh, nothing you can... Oh! Kill. Oh! <laughs> Evan SMA and Kahuna go down to the rocket army. Two people in oh, the same man. bunker. Yep. Great shots there by Best Pony being called yep. out with Karma Cut probably being the call man for it. Spotting. It also caused uh two people to bandage in there no 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 tennis oh what do you no it is uh interesting how the the arty at max range falls on this this arc it's like always Absolutely. in the same arc not the ballistic trajectory of it yep yeah More and more already just bombarding this position. You got to just kind of pull up in, in your buildings when that happens, and it, it can be a rough time for you. It, it feels like you don't have good eyes out on where you oh, need yeah, to have eyes so whenever good. this artillery yeah. is just raining. Because you know that everyone's hiding at the same time. So, yeah. All right, they're going to start slowly just collapsing around us. Guys. Does a good job of what that? it's supposed to. I mean, it's not necessarily there. meant to kill everybody. Just keep their heads down. Absolutely. Perfect. And the 50s are keeping heads down over there, too. Moving out here to the southwest, we've got Bird Person, Buddy35 Mardos, and Lucid, as well as Shattered Ritual. Just kind of holding down the southwest, watching for those technicals that are putting in fire. They know they're all down there, but they can't really do a whole lot about them. Their LAT is limited, and they already got one hit on one of them, so... So much so they can do about I, it. I kind of see an interesting development happening here, or prediction, I should say. I feel like the insurgents are going to surge in from the east side and from the southwest, and they're going to do a pretty good job. But they don't know about this squad in the south and southeast. 
So they're gonna push in, and then that this squad down in village, in east of village, is gonna be able to come in behind. Totally unknown. Because they've just been sitting there, totally quiet, mighty. And his squad. Right, my life is ready for a Just lot. absolutely. Me to move this truck? Um, save it for later. We're gonna get you oh, and it looks like we might have a vehicle-based IED here. Hey, absolutely. Got reports of a cell phone. Verizon plan going on. <laughs> Can you hear me Where now? Is... Boom. Where is it? <laughs> oh, there we go. Ebersense Science and Jay Remick. Are they driving it in yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Though I, I will say, the VBIT yet. Is it driven by Everscience? Everscience? No, that's the yellow one. Hmm. Where is it? It's on the transport. Oh. You know, over here on the east side, though, Sneaky Sniper, Xbit being command in Truth Realm, getting real close to Fulcrum and uh, Lu Lucas and Jellum and Slinger, right as well, right, pushing up here on the east side. They're getting real close. These guys just trying to crawl through this field and keep things low and sneaky. Oh, now they get up and like they're, they're starting moving, to make yep. a push in. We'll see if that 50 cal can spot them if they decide to move up the road. I doubt they will. Ooh, they're on the other side of the wall, yep. Oh, man. Lucas goes down. Truth Realm taps him. Grenade out. Grenade goes Slinger. in. Does not get anyone. Sneaky oh. Sniper peeks the corner, takes down Rate, Fulcrum, Triple and kill. Slinger. Triple for Sneaky Sniper. What a maneuver. You know, uh, Truth Realm move. called it out. He called it out. He knew that they were there. And Sneaky Sniper peeks that corner and takes them out. Silverman, Magus Arcanus, and Death Squad were supposed to be watching, I feel like, watching his back there. But they could not get shots on Sneaky Sniper before he got him down. Sneaky Sniper actually proning, or Silverman proning out in that field. I could not see Sneaky Sniper before he pushed out and got those shots. Great work by him. Yeah, it was interesting that only three people of that squad uh, were up on the wall. Where was the rest of them? You know, it's not always wise to push everybody all together, so I could see the logic there, but they should have had somebody watching that corner. That feels like an oversight. Yep, they could have had someone up on the berm. I mean, of course, Absolutely. hindsight's twenty twenty, and we are uh -huh. in the ultimate quarterback position here. <laughs> but, uh, you can learn a lot from just watching people play. Absolutely. I know, for me, I've been so much better about watching corners and uh, do you know things of that nature just from doing commentary. Now they're starting to smoke in here on yeah, the east. Yeah, a little bit of smoke coming out. Not necessarily the most... I feel like this is more of distraction smoke. Although they oh, are but here comes the force. push. Look at this big old push coming in with Karma Cut here. Magnetic. Magus yeah, there we go. Squad. Now that they're everybody in. Silverman, Silverman dropped an IED there. Oh, detonates, taking out one. Got Sneaky Sniper, so Sneaky Sniper takes down three, then gets taken out himself, but he's the only one that dies to that IED. Push east IED off the east. Now Expert gets to see the uh, remains there. Oh, and here they come. Expert, Expert calling out multiple footsteps east wall. Truth Realm still holding that door. Firing in shots on Truth Realm. Xbit holding down the top floor there. Grenade goes into Truth Realm, does not kill him. Truth Realm gets hit now. He's in a bad spot. He's going to have a hard time getting out of here, but he's laying down fire with that saw. Let's see if he can take Oof, out it. Yeah, anyone. he's just opening up there. Now he's got a reload and bandage. He's throwing a grenade first. He kind of whiffs the grenade. Definitely needs to bandage. Ooh! Oh, Truth Realm goes Truth down. Exit pushes the corner. Exit. Command. Running. He lives and runs away for the moment. <laughs> Takes up position in that building. Sunny D pushes out, gets one down. 
and then lots of shots come back in on him. Expert with a grenade. <laughs> he sees all the targets. Oh man! Oh, he goes down. He takes Oof. out Fafinator, and Command is down. Expert is down. That is Command down. Goobs are in Sunny D get taken out. I would assume Expert, being the commander that he is, would have kind of given everybody the heads up on what's going to be going on. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's, uh, hey, they're in here, we're in here, building to building, let's go. Absolutely. So, yeah, command. looks like uh, Insurgents took over the east side, U.S. on the west side. Blank spaces and jacks might run into Kirkley and... Ooh, ooh. Oh! In the south, we've got the techie squad who moved into village. But they don't see the quad... The quad behind them. Oh, here it comes. It's rolling in. And Karma's oh. calling out for all IEDs to the front to help breach. Nope. Creeping gets shot out. Dreadful Decay gets shot out. Yep, this is where techies are not so great at vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle combat. Yeah, they can't advance. On the north side, Karma Cut has pushed in as well. It looks like this attack is now coming to a head. Oh man, those technicals opening up on the south. We've got Karma Cut pushing in on the north. Immune style taking lead, hits Chappie. Oh man, it's getting Sometimes intense right now. Too much action Chappie. to cover, yeah. Chappie gets taken down on the north side as well. Oh man, this is getting intense. <laughs> this is where yep. you get real scared. Lots of fire yeah, going out. Concentrate on your corner. All right. Oh, Ram coming around the corner. This could be another triple kill. Nope. One down. Ram coming around. Gets wounded. That's fallback. And he's running. He's sensing that grenade coming out of his old position. Grenade's oh, not coming. Oh, and he too. bled out. That's too bad. Unfortunate. See what happened to that squad behind. Yep, here they come behind them. <laughs> you called John, that. Han on Solo the north spine. side. On the north side, immune style karma cut starting to push in. They get some hits on Jax. Oh! VBID! VBID coming in. Law comes in. Oh man, lots of shots going out. Insurgents are getting popped trying to breach this compound. Oh! Oh! That IED, I don't know that it did much. Does not look on. like it. It's gorgeous. Looks really nice. Yeah, that squad. IEDs and the mortars are so pretty. That squad that's pushing in behind, we can see them moving up here. Mighty in command of them, starting Oof. to pull them in. Ooh, that was the technical exploding, I believe, yep. yeah? two techies down. Oh, Not that they're a great assets at this point, but... It's crispy. And mighty leading the charge in here. Karma Cut goes down, that's command down. So both commands are down currently. Xbit and Karma Cut, both down. Murica gets taken out trying to push in. It's crispy goes down as well. You know, tickle your mango here. Saving his squad more than likely because he was watching for the repush in. He takes down Mighty in trades and uh, Mighty might have been T killed right TK right there. Actually, yes, he was. Rollad took him yep. down. He was scared. <laughs> it happens. Oh. Boogie Surgeon push on the south, more or less wiped out. What are we down to? Just two insurgents. In the north. Yeah, and then just what, two. Remick way out in the east? Looks like it. Silverman, let's go ahead and clear out some of these cameras. Can you get to me? Yep. Come on, out come of way. Yeah, just yeah. Oh, yep. Silverman gets taken down as he crosses, I believe. Absolutely. And Magnetic, now the only one alive that's in this range. Grenade takes down Deg. Actually, that was his own grenade. Yep. Oh, bad Degas. grenade. We've had a, quite a few of those this round. <laughs> I want to say we've had uh, I feel five a little bad. friendly grenades. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Magnetic now the only one alive on that north side. Hmm. Where Jay Remick trio... is alive somewhere, right? Trio of U.S. soldiers on the northeast. Where did they come from? Is the clear? 
Uh, they were hunting down the techie, actually, the, RD, the rocket the techie. Sent out to do that. Yep, they were tasked to hunt down the rocket techie, and then they were pulled back. Ooh, ooh, so. close, close encounters here. Oh, there goes one. He gets excited. Satan takes him down. All There's right, still one more man. pushing in here. All right. That's Shay Remick. Yep. You got Remick. Wait, is Best Pony, is Best Pony still alive out there on the rocket, Artie, or the rocket techie? Okay. Best Pony did get taken so out. Yeah, just Remick versus the world here. Just absolutely, Jay Remick trying to trying to push in here. Oh, and Starting he's a to scout too, so he definitely oh. has. Shots coming in. He do oh, and there he goes. Jackie takes him down. <laughs> I think that's going to be GG for us. Is it? I do not it's know. It's been called early around. before. Everyone's cautious. Absolutely. We'll see. Um, is that somebody alive? Is that... Some, I don't no? think so. Yeah, no. That's GG. It. That's it. All right. Yeah. I think there's yeah, a call. That, that's, that's just GG. someone back at base that didn't uh, go into <laughs> admin mode. Well, there's the first there round. It is. Yeah. So that, that was, was pretty, a big one. Pretty close. Thirty-five to twenty-five deaths and kills, respectively. And um, you know, Silverman got eight kills for the insurgents, so he eight, was putting wow. in work. Yeah. Well, was that the? Good do we know who was him. firing the arty? That was best pony for most was of the it? night. He got three. Because, yeah, we know he, he got, got three kills. Two. So. Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, so before we get kicked off with the second round here, I'm going to go over some of the stuff you guys got in chat. Yeah, a couple Let's questions see. in chat. Yeah. Zemtix. These events These public events or public? not? Yeah. No. So yeah, this event is public. We went over this a little bit earlier, but so the first op of the month, the first Wednesday op is public. You don't need the uh, SOTT training. Uh, everything else, uh, you need SOTT to participate. Let's just make sure everyone's on the same schedule, same uh, same page there. Absolutely. Also, a good reminder, as we're getting ready to go into a break here, we do have a giveaway going on at the end of the second round here. We're going to be giving away a copy of Squad. And all you need to do to enter is sometime here within the next few minutes through the end of the cast, just drop your name or drop some sort of message in chat. If you drop that message in chat, you'll be entered in the giveaway. And we'll make sure to remind you guys of that right before we do the giveaway. But we'll be giving out a copy of Squad at the end. What is SOTT? I'll let you, I'll let yeah. you uh, watch the the basic training trailer that we'll have coming up here in the break, and we'll see how that goes. But I think we're gonna go ahead and take a break here for a little bit, and we'll be back for another round and the giveaway after that. So thank you guys for watching.